Hello world, it's Angelot. We're back with another Dots on a Map tutorial. This time I want to go over using a canvas overlay to render on top of a map. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this example from the last video where we plotted a bunch of points um, and did the quad tree selection, and we're going to re-implement this as a canvas overlay. And the main reason you'd probably want to do this is if you notice how sluggish it is to drag these 6,000 points around. Because um, when you render with SVG, all 6,000 of these points are um, DOM elements, right? So the browser has to update all of these DOM elements every time we pan or we zoom. And, uh, you know, it's like sort of a rule of thumb that over one or 2,000 DOM elements on a pretty fast computer will end up um, starting to, to slow down if you're updating all of them. Like, and, and here we're updating their position every time we uh, reproject the map by panning or zooming. So I've already prepared a block with code with the canvas here, and we can see that it's much snappier when we uh, pan around. Let's zoom out, zoom in, we go to the same spot, and you see that it's way more responsive um, so let's take a look at how we do this. It's actually conceptually very similar to the SVG version that we did. Um, we're still, let me scroll down to the code, we're still setting up, you know, I basically forked uh, the code and then switched out the part where we append an SVG element uh, to the map container and now we append a canvas. Uh, so let's go over how this works, and I'll talk a little bit, you know, I'll explain rendering circles with Canvas. Um, Canvas is its own API, its own way of drawing, and, you know, part of it doing it its way means that certain things are, are much faster. So let's take a look at that. So when you make the Canvas, we append it just like we append our SVG, and then we grab the node. So now this Canvas element is the actual DOM node, not the SVG selection. And we need to tell the canvas DOM node its width and height. So this is different from setting the, like the style to 100%, like the width and height to 100%, or using uh, CSS. Um, this sort of is for the canvas to say, you know, the, the thing that I'm drawing on, like what are the pixel dimensions of that? And then the key thing we need from canvas is to get a context. Uh, so it's often written as abbreviated as CTX, stands for context. Um, and we get a 2D context, which is um, one of two kinds that are supported right now. The other would be uh, WebGL. Um, but for now, yeah, we just get this canvas. And then I'm doing something where I have a second overlay. Uh, so let's skip that for now, and we'll talk about that. I think that gets into really interesting territories and possibilities. But uh, let's just start with the first canvas, which is what we're going to use to draw all the blue dots. So again, we grab our data with d3.csv, we have a render function, and then this is where we start drawing. So the first thing you'll notice is this clear rect. And what that does is essentially like, if you think of an Etch-a-Sketch, right, you just erase the whole screen. Um, and our B-box here, I didn't talk about that. Um, that is the bounding box of our whole document, right? So this is, this get bounding client rect is a, a function you should totally familiar, familiarize yourself with, but that will actually give you the, the top left and width and height of any DOM element as it appears on the screen. Um, so, you know, regardless of where it's nested and stuff and, um, and all that, really handy if you need to know the absolute position. And in our case, we don't care about the absolute position because we've taken up the whole screen with our map. Um, but we, uh, we want the width and the height. And so we'll use that throughout this to sort of know the dimensions that we're working with. Um, you can probably get the width and height of the map area via some Mapbox API call, but I tend to use this. Um, and in this case, I'm using on the, the document body, but we could use it on other elements as well. It's just a good thing to know. All right, so we're clearing this because Basically, the way Canvas works is that we're, we're essentially going to draw onto an image, right? Our Canvas is, you can think about it as an image that has pixels. We're going to color those pixels, and that's how we're going to draw dots or anything else. And every time we draw on it, unlike SVG, where if you move a circle, right, the circle itself moves, 
In Canvas, if you draw a circle and then you draw the same circle somewhere else, both circles are going to be there. So what we do is we clear the screen and we redraw all of the circles. And you can see that here. We're doing a for each over all our data. And we're drawing, this is the code for drawing a circle. I'll talk about how that works in a second. Um, and so you might think, well, oh, that sucks. Like every time I move the map, it's clearing and redrawing. But it turns out that drawing in Canvas is super fast and looping over an array, you know, every time of like 6,000 is, is pretty fast too. Um, it's the DOM that gets in the way because it has to, you know, manage so much stuff that when you're looping over 6,000 DOM elements, that slows down. But with Canvas, it's sort of set it and forget it. You draw the circle, it moves on. It doesn't keep anything in memory. It doesn't care. It's just like those pixels have been flipped and they've been changed their colors. And now that, you know, Canvas doesn't care about it. It just keeps going. So other things to notice is this fill style and stroke style where you can use CSS colors. You could use hex here, but if you want to use opacity, uh, you have to kind of bake it into the RGBA here. Um, so that's how we're drawing our circles to be, um, you know, translucent. You can see down here that they're um, translucent on top of each other. And basically you set this and then everything you draw, every time you call fill or stroke, it will use that setting. If we wanted to individually color these, we could move those inside the for loop and change it based on the data. Uh, it's perfectly reasonable. But in this case, we know that they're all going to be the same color. So we just do it once, it saves a little bit of uh, performance, you know, and a time. That's fine. So we're drawing here. We, we project our point as we would for SVG. Um, we use the X and Y coordinates to center our arc. So the way canvas circles work is kind of like you can imagine a pie chart where it's like the full chart. So it's uh, 300 from zero to 360 degrees or two, two pi. Um, if we drew these arcs as let's say math dot pi did math dot pi over two, we get all these half circles, which looks kind of cool. It's like a bunch of little molehills on our map. Um, so I hear first, <laughs> uh, so that's how that works. And uh, this is our radius, you know, six pixels. We can make really small dots, we can make really big dots, um, just like with SVG. And then you you also need to begin a path and then fill and, and stroke. Basically, if we don't call stroke, it won't draw the strokes around the circles. And if we don't call fill, it won't fill in the circles. Um, and if we don't call begin path, I think we'll get something really weird where it won't even render properly. Um, yeah, that was a mistake. So basically you have to, you have to call begin path to signify like, Hey, I'm going to draw a new thing here. Uh, I think if you don't call begin path, it's trying to like connect all those arcs somehow and, and it crashed. So I guess that's what better proof could you have that you need to call begin path. Um, all right, so where were we here? Uh, definitely call begin path and then draw your thing. And so, you know, this is sort of saying we're setting up to draw, but this is actually like put the pen down and fill it or stroke it. All right, and then just like before, we on our move, we re-render and on our, or sorry, a zoom or, or pan, we re-render. We'll get to this overlay thing in a second. Um, and then we have our quad tree, quad tree part. And so this is where we motivate this overlay because, you know, every time I move the mouse, right, I'm recoloring those circles and I'm drawing this little oval around my mouse cursor. So if I were to draw that on the canvas, right, instead of the overlay, I would need to redraw all of the, the base circles first and then redraw I then draw my uh, highlighted circles. Or I would need to put logic in the render functions like, oh, if this is a highlighted circle, color it red or pink or whatever, and then otherwise color it blue and re-render. But that means that every mouse move I'd need to re-render, right? And, you know, re-rendering is pretty cheap, you know, as you zoom around this fine, but like, do you really want to re-render every time you move the mouse just a little bit? So with it, just a little bit of thinking, we can say, okay, well, we've already got one canvas on top of our map. 
why can't we just layer another one on top? Um, and so that other one, right, and canvases are, are transparent by default. So if we draw stuff in our other canvas, then we're essentially saying, um, you know, this is going to draw, like we'll draw this and whatever is here will lay, lay on top of this and this lays on top of our map, right? So we're just kind of extending the initial overlay. And, and you can see when we define this, uh, essentially just copy pasted this code, created a canvas overlay, set it to the same width and height, get a context for that overlay. And now when I draw on that overlay, it will be um, as if I'm drawing on the first one, except for I don't need to clear the first one, I can just clear the uh, overlay. So every time the mouse moves, I erase whatever I've drawn. And then I draw my oval, which or my ellipse, um, you know, I set the fill and stroke, I set the line dash, which is how you get the dotted lines around it. I begin the path, I draw the ellipse, which works very similar to the art arc, and uh, just takes two radii. And, um, and then I, I loop over my hits, which is the, the points that are close, right to my oval, or to my mouse cursor. And I get, you know, again, the same code basically as before I project it, I draw my art, and uh, I begin and I fill. I don't I don't stroke these. I just um, fill them, and that's that. Um, and then I oh, wait. Why am I recalling render? See now this is actually a little snappier. That's funny. I I think when I was originally doing this, I was thinking. Oh, I have to re-render, and then I put that in there and forgot to get rid of it. Also, this rendering code needs to happen after the hits. See some live debugging going on here. Um, okay, there we go. That looks looks a bit better now. Um, right, so. So yeah, we, we just rendered onto this extra canvas and it just sits on top of the original one. And, and you know, this concept could be extended. You could actually have canvas, canvas, SVG, canvas, right? Like you, there's no limit to how many rectangles you stack on top of each other and, and they're uh, see-through. So maybe another time I'll do something where we pop up some SVG stuff around the mouse so that you could actually uh, interact with SVG elements and you know, if you're only rendering a few of those, that, that'd be pretty uh, performant. Um, so you can kind of limit the uh, number of um, things you're drawing in SVG while you, you sort of show all the stuff in Canvas. So yeah, the, the sky's the limit here. Um, it's, you know, switching between Canvas and, and SVG isn't too hard with a little practice. And hopefully these two examples, let me save this one now that's been fixed. Um, help you try something like that. All right. Well, till the next tutorial.